If your mind gets stuck on cravings to drink and you can't redirect them, then you're more likely to white knuckle it until the craving becomes so intense that you drink. And if your mind gets stuck on negative thoughts, jealousy, or unfairness, then you're going to ruminate until you become more and more depressed or until you retaliate and seek revenge. In this episode, I'm explaining what is going on in the brain to cause our thoughts to become stuck on something, why other people are able to redirect and move on, and what you can do to start improving your inhibitory control. So let's dig in. The more that I work with others on their anger and or their sobriety, the more I notice patterns. I've noticed that some problem drinkers, whether they're actively drinking or have years of sobriety, tend to ruminate on their problems and get stuck on them. I've talked in several episodes about cognitive flexibility and how we're not able to adapt. So go listen to episode 181 if you haven't yet to learn more about why this happens and how it keeps us stuck thinking that our drinking is going to be different. When you're an inflexible thinker, you keep applying the same process to your life even after you've had proof that it's the wrong behavior. Like when we keep convincing ourselves that we can drink even though we've tried it hundreds of times already. Inflexible thinking can also contribute to rumination and retaliation. I think it's interesting how some people, when they get upset, they look to seek revenge against others and they can't seem to redirect their thoughts from it. Retaliation seems like another way to get relief. And I spoke about that feeling of relief in episode 186 about anger. A 2018 study published in Scientific Reports developed a game with three rounds where you play against two other people for money but you're not aware that the two other people are just the computer. In each round, one of the three players has control of the game and the money. In the first round, the computer plays fair and everyone gets a share of the money. In the second round, the computer plays unfairly, keeping all the money and it sends you annoying trash talking messages. The participants in the study were hooked up to an MRI the entire time to analyze brain activity. And in the last round, the participant gets control of the game and can choose to take revenge or not. Participants were generally nice to the fair player, but many chose to take revenge on the unfair player. When they looked at their brains, they found activity in the amygdala, which we know is responsible for emotions. And the angrier the participant was, the more activity they saw in the amygdala. They also saw activity in the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, which is a part of the brain that helps to regulate our emotions. There was a small group of participants who did not take revenge, and they played the game fairly even to the unfair player from round two. When the researchers looked at their brains, they saw greater dorsolateral prefrontal cortex activity during round two, the provocation round and low activity in the prefrontal cortex was associated with taking more revenge on the unfair player. So it seems like when the participants were angry, the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex can come online and regulate the emotion so they can calm down and remain in control of their behavior. A 2017 study found that patients who were addicted to alcohol didn't recruit their dorsolateral prefrontal cortex as much as healthy controls. And the more severe their addiction, the less they recruited the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. (laughs) 